So I'm just down at Wellham Lake in Moulton. The barrow's all loaded up, ready to go. And we're just waiting for Alex to turn up. It's all right, I've only been waiting, uh, oh, 55 minutes for him. Quarter past eight, I said be here. Quarter past eight, look at that. 10 past nine. So as soon as Alex, oh, actually, speak of the knobhead, here he is. Yeah, nice one. Well, good morning. Oh, yeah, good afternoon, <laughs> dickhead. Nice leisurely uh, drive through the countryside today. Mm. See you already settled. Hurry up! Kezzy's after get down from there. Come on, Kez. It's actually snowing. Is it actually? No, it is snowing. Oh, but it's snowing. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Look at that. Skills, eh? <laughs> There was a branch falling off the tree. <laughs> was it? Yes. Oh Your watercraft skills are amazing. <laughs> What's up Carp Freaks and welcome to the December instalment of Carp Life. Today I have come to Wellham Lake in Moulton, North Yorkshire, not too far from where I live really and it is a place I've fished quite a bit over the years. It's a beautiful lake set in woodland, a very mature estate lake um, but it is very shallow and silty um, but because it's fed by a spring the water temperatures never get that low even in the winter and it does have great winter form. Um, well I'm certainly hoping it does for today because we are only here for a short day session. Um, I had a little bit of a, a walk around, a bit of a scout about and I have seen quite a few fish just behind me here, kind of in this lee of the wind. Uh, the wind's pushing down the lake, we've got a big snaggy tree to our left and it's creating a bit of a, a slack area of water in front of me. And there's quite a few fish cruising about mid-water, um, just a few rod lengths from the bank. So what I've done so far, I've already put out one zig. Um, just a, a mid-depth black zig liner and I've got another one about to be deployed. So I'll get this rod in position then I think we'll get the kettle on and I'll tell you a bit more about what I got up to in December. Well that's both the rods now in position. They're both just a, an underarm flick out, really. Um, normally, I would fish a tight line when fishing with six uh, to improve the bite indication. But because I'm fishing at such short range, probably 10, 15 yard max, um, and the zig itself is only 18 inches high, um, I fish with a, a slacker line. The water here is so incredibly gin clear. 
I would like to belt the concealer line as best I could by um, slacking it off, allowing it to fall and pin to the light bed rather than having a tight line running right the way through the swim. And um, because I am fishing at such short range and such a short zig, thankfully, I'm able to do that on this occasion. So right back at the start of December, I met up with Harry at Girton Sailing Club Lake. Um, but we weren't there to do any sailing. We were in fact there to put the finishing touches to the Challenge Christmas Special. Now the lake itself is a huge gravel pit, certainly over 100 acres. And it is home to some very big carp, although it is something of a, an unknown quantity really. No one really knows exactly how big the fish are in there. But what we did know was there are some, some pike. And it is something I would like to get into a bit more and learn a lot more about. So Harry offered to give me a bit of a pike fishing tutorial. Tighten the clutch up, like play in tension. Mm -hmm. Then open the bail arm. Then yeah. Put that on. Just pub chucking mackerel into the abyss. For me, it wasn't really <laughs> angling at its finest. But after some encouragement and guidance of Harry, it was actually me that had the first bit of action. I'm excited to see it. Oh. You're playing it a bit like a carp. Am I? Yeah, you should play them quite hard. Really? Yeah. The pike! It's a pike! It's a pike! Definitely a pike. Definitely a pike. That's definitely a pike. Look at him. He's not bad. Oh, you think it's one of them in the park? Isn't that next? Yeah! Yeah! Oh, Hank! <laughs> Look at that. Bigger one next. Let's hope so. Oh, you've got me. <laughs> Harry's concerned that he looks a full camo wank, so he just said, before you film, let me just put my solar pets on. So image conscious these days, Harry. Well, nobody wants to be a full camo wank, do they? <laughs> it's not. And if people do, they shouldn't, because it looks ridiculous. Except when you're going on the ferry to France. No, that's like the most ridiculous. You look like a proper victim if you do that. Throughout the day, both myself and Harry managed to catch a few more fish actually, with Harry landing the biggest of the day of around £11. This is a lovely pack. What do you reckon to that? That's nice. They are lovely, lovely marked. Very nice. Nice pack. Nice pike! And we even managed to catch a few during the hours of darkness as well. But essentially, we were there to work. So that evening, we spent the time doing the voiceovers as well as the connecting dialogue for the Christmas challenge. Before we move on, I just want to say a massive thank you for all the great feedback and to all of those who sent me messages saying how much you enjoyed watching that festive special challenge. Um, it really was a lot of fun to film, albeit rather stressful at times, but knowing just how much you guys enjoyed watching it really does make it all the more worthwhile. The very next day I was working down at my lake and while I was walking around the stock pond I saw a bit of a, a commotion going on. There was a pheasant going absolutely mental. He was 
jumping up and flapping his wings and giving it all out with his claws. And when I, uh, when I walked round, he was attacking a tawny owl that was on the ground. And um, so I kind of ran over, uh, booted the pheasant out the way <laughs> and picked up the tawny owl. And he was, he was in a bad way. His wing was, to me, I thought it was broken. It was, uh, it was bleeding, all his feathers were all tatty. And he just sort of laid there and let me, let me pick him up really. He looks pretty lifeless. Um, so I wrapped him up in, in, in my jacket and uh, took it down to the local RSPCA centre. Uh, and they said there was nothing they could do, I should take it to a vet. So I took it down to the, to the vets. And again, they said there's nothing they could really do, but they did give him a, a pain killing jab. Um, and they suggested I took it to an owl sanctuary. Well, as it happens, there is a Kirkleatham owl sanctuary, not too far from where I live. So I headed off over there with him. You don't see many of them. It's a what, a grey, grey mop, what do you mean? What? Then, I'll, then I'll make a chestnut colour. Right. So you can get you can get grey and you can get grey ones and chestnut ones and it's a it's a grey. Right. But you don't get that many of them. Well the guys at the Owl Sanctuary said its wing wasn't broken, but it was very badly damaged. Um, and they said it would probably take at least a couple of weeks for those injuries to heal. Um, but they said it could be rehabilitated, um, it would just need a lot of uh, fattening up, feeding up, and then he could be released back down the lake. So I left him with them, given my details and kind of hope for the best. A couple of days later and I was out on the bank again and I was on that Nottinghamshire canal where you joined me last time in carp life. Now you all know what happened during that session but after Alex had left I met up with Mark Coulson to shoot a piece for the Fox website. With that feature in the bag, I reeled the rods in and we both retired to the cafe right, so to make a start on another new project of mine. And this is something I've wanted to do for such a long time, and that is write a book. Right now, it really is very much in its infancy. Um, it's a long way off being complete. It certainly won't be out this year. I'm hoping it'll be ready for next next year sometime um, so yeah it may be a long way off but still it's something I am so excited about now something else I was super excited about happened the following day and that was I was getting a delivery of more fish for the lake now whenever I know there's new fish going in the night before I'm always like a kid waiting for Christmas I, I, I really do get so excited about it I almost can't sleep and these fish promise to be something pretty special. 1811. So here's the first fish that we're putting in today and it's an awesome looking common of 18 pound 11 ounces. That is perfect. So here's the second fish that we're putting in the pool today and it's a beautiful scaly fish of 14 pound 7 ounces. Now these fish came from Tony Campbell who owns Carp for Restocking and ever since I fished Farlow's Lake 2 during one of the early episodes of the challenge I caught some of these beautiful scaly fish and on that session I, I said to myself I need some of these for my lake they just looked absolutely incredible and I did indeed go on to stock um, I think it was half a dozen fish from Tony that, that same winter and they did very very well. Um, they've grown fantastically, uh, they look great and I felt it was time to introduce a few more. So this is the 10th and final fish that we're stocking into the pool today and I think I may have said this with pretty much every fish that's came out the tank. I reckon this one is my favourite of the bunch. Lovely scaly mirror of 16 pound 8 ounces. As you can see from the footage, the fish were absolutely stunning and I was, 
I was all over the moon with them. And that brought the total number of fish in the pool up to 65. Um, I haven't got any more plans to introduce any more fish this winter, um, but there will be more fish being stocked next winter with the aim of taking the total number of fish up to around 75 to 80. So yeah, there's still a few more to go in yet. <laughs> what kind of dog is that? It's a terrier of some description. Hey, yeah, mate, it's here, all right. Do you reckon he smelled the bovril? <laughs> he knows all about the bovril, don't you, mate? Hey, you're, sh you're shivering. <laughs> you're ready, shivering. He's ready for the bovril. Yeah. <laughs> Hiya, mate. What actually is Bob? It's, it's, it's a high-protein beef paste. That's why. That's, that's why what it says on the. Around. That's what it says on the jar. That's why he's come over. You know it's Bovril time, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes. Oh, it stinks. Damn. Oh, it's, it's just like gravy. Youth. <laughs> I'm just going to do half a mug. Yeah. If you waste it, I won't be happy. Yeah, don't want that. Oh, yes. Oh, that is so good. The following week, I was out on the bank again. But this time it was for my first grayling session of the winter. Now you might remember last January, I really did get into my grayling fishing and uh, I set myself a target of catching a two pounder and I did that quite comfortably. In fact, I think I caught 10 two pounders that January. But then I moved the goalposts and um, set myself a new target of catching a three, which was obviously gonna be a lot more difficult. Um, but I decided to hit the river a bit earlier this time, last time I started on the 1st of January, it was now the middle of December, and I just hoped I could pick things up where I left off. I was absolutely pumped for this session, I couldn't wait. I got down to the river um, a short while before first light, and it felt great being back down there, but it soon became clear this was a very different river to what I'd fished at the start, you're steaming right up. <laughs> and I got down to the river shortly before first light. Apart from that trout on my very first run down with the float, it really was very tough going and it was clear even at this sort of early stage that the river was a lot different to when I fished it back in January. The water was very low and the river itself was very weedy indeed. Um, there was very little pace on the river, so although the weed was starting to die off, there wasn't really enough pace to, to uproot it and wash it downstream. And I did think that a lot of the grayling um, and the trout were sat in the, the shallows in all this thick weed and apart from that one fish on my first cast the next bite i received was on probably my last cast of the day so in short it really was very tough going no signs of any grayling at all and i just hoped that the river conditions would improve um, for my next trip there The following week I was down in the fens with Matt Rand and Lewis Porter 
and Matt had offered to take us deep into the fens to try our luck for a Xander. We actually went on this same pre-Christmas Xander fishing session a couple of years ago and uh, we managed to catch some nice fish up to just under double figures but this time our plan was to try and catch a double figure Z. In typical Lewis fashion he claims best spot again just above a fallen tree but it was me that got the first bit of action albeit not from our intended species but from this small jack pike. A bit muddy, isn't he? We're videoing now for when. Oxygen the bovril. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the Xander fishing proved to be very, very frustrating indeed. For some reason, they just weren't feeding properly at all. We all suffered lots of drop runs and failed to connect with anything at all. But it was a, it was a brilliant night all the same. We drank lots of mulled wine, which none of us liked, but you've got to drink it this Christmas. Uh, we had lots of laughs and we decided that if things hadn't improved fishing wise by the morning then we'd need to have a complete rethink. Well morning came round and despite a flurry of activity once again there were just drop runs we just couldn't connect with them at all. So we decided to change our target species and Matt knew of a section of river that offered some great chub fishing. But before we could go fishing, we needed our bait. So we made our way down to Tesco's and minced it right up. Mince. You have as well, but I'll yeah. give you some money. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got any money on me. <laughs> so armed with our new bait, we made our way down to the river and guess who legged it to the best swim while I was still unloading my kit from the van? <laughs> now, our tactic for this session was to fish cut down pieces of steak as hook baits with cage feeders packed with mints. And it was Matt who recommended we use this tactic. Um, it's not something that I've done before. I have done quite a lot of chub fishing in my early match fishing days. Um, but Matt tells me this is really a, a fantastic approach for those big chub and with this being my first dedicated chub fishing session I couldn't wait to put it into practice and when that tip smashed round for the first time I couldn't wait to see what I was attached to. Well he's only gone and done it. That's a good. Does it? Very best of luck, mate. <laughs> my next bite did indeed turn out to be from the desired species. Oh, Lou's got a treat. Yes! Oh, mate! That's not bad, eh? <laughs> so, we've been fishing at this chubby spot for about half an hour, and on my third cast, I have got my. It's my dedicated chub PB. I've definitely caught bigger back as a matchman, but it's definitely my biggest caught whilst trying to catch them. £4.15 ounces! Happy with that. Cracker mate. Thank you. Lovely, isn't it? Yeah, it's a cracker mate. Bigger than Lewis's as well. Yes. <laughs> Although we only spent a couple of hours in that chubby swim, we still managed to catch plenty of fish between us. It really was such a good session. In fact, you could say it was a perfect pre-Christmas social. Lots of laughs and plenty of fish caught too. And Catching those chub really did 
make me want to go and spend a bit more time catching them. So who knows, next month you may see me doing a bit more chubby chasing. Can't say that. What? Chubby That's fine. In this context, it's fine. <laughs> It was now just a couple of days before Christmas and I got the phone call I'd been waiting for. Hootie McOwlface was fit and well and ready to come home. Well, it's been a couple of weeks since I dropped the tawny owl off at the Kirkleatham Owl Sanctuary and I've just been to collect him. This is him in the box and um, they said it must have just been um, the wing, its wing must have been bad, badly bruised but it's all totally healed now. He's flying well, feeding well, and I can release him back, back down the lake. Um, so the best thing to do is release him um, on dusk. So by the time I get back down to my lake, it'll be somewhere near dark and I can watch him fly off. So we're back down the lake and we've got Hootie in the box and uh, we're gonna get him home for Christmas. He, uh, he lives in that that box there. That's an owl box that we've uh, been installed quite a few years ago. I'm pretty sure that's where he lives. So uh, let's let him go. I haven't seen him for a couple of weeks. I wonder if he remembers me. I just imagine it bursting out like a jack in the box and yeah. having these talons impaled in my face. Gone. <laughs> that was quicker than I expected. Yeah. I thought you would have crawled about and then just went. Well, you can fly fine anyway. A couple of days later, and something pretty momentous happened. Father Christmas came. Has he been? Could have took his boots off though. He walked glitter right through the lounge. So Christmas in the pitchers household is a pretty quiet one, really. After the kids had opened the presents, we popped up to see my mum and dad. And then after that, the, the in-laws come round 
and during the day the kids were spent zooming around on the new scooters and playing with all their new toys. As a kid I used to always go fishing on Boxing Day, it was a bit of a tradition of mine. I used to love going out on the bank using all the new gear that I get given for Christmas. But ever since I met my girlfriend 18 years ago, it's her sister's birthday on Boxing Day and we used to always go around there for a bit of a bit of a party. But this year I said no, I'm not having it, I'm going back to my old childhood tradition and going fishing on Boxing Day. So I decided to head back to the Grayling River and try my luck for that three pounder. The session didn't get off to too bad a start. Well, you may not be a monster by this river's standards, but this is my first grayling of this winter's campaign. And it's absolutely beautiful. I say he's not a monster, it, it, it's probably close to two pound, it might actually be a two pounder. I'll weigh him shortly. But that's the first fish of the day. And what a start that is. Well, that fish weighed one pound, 12 ounces. So a nice size grayling to, to kick things off, but still only a small fish by that river's standards. The rest of the day was a bit of a struggle. The water was still low, clear, very little pace and it seems as though the only other fish biting that day were trout. I've just checked down the, down the throat of this fish just to see if there's any maggots down there, see what it's been eating. I've hardly introduced any bait into this swim. You can see there, loads of maggots, and there's a massive beetle in there as well. A huge beetle, he's just coughing it up now. size of that. Yes, yeah, so he's got a, a throat full of maggots and a huge beetle, which, which tells me that there can't be... I mean, there's, a lot, there's more maggots down there than what you can actually, actually see. Um, so that tells me that there, there aren't that many fish in the swim. I've only put in um, just a few, a few droppers of maggots. I haven't been I haven't been loose feeding any because there's too much flow here. I don't really know where, I don't really know where they'll end up. So I've only put the maggots in with the bait dropper. But it's absolutely full of, full of maggots. There's a little stickleback in there as well. <laughs> yeah, stickleback maggots and a huge beetle. So this is one greedy fish. But like I say, it tells me that there aren't, there's a stickleback there. There aren't loads of fish in this swim. Um, otherwise he wouldn't have so much bait down his, down his throat. Well, it might have been a struggle, but there was one good thing about fishing on Boxing Day, and that was the addition of the leftover turkey sandwiches. Well, we're now approaching the end of the year, and one thing I haven't mentioned so far is what's been happening down at my lake. Well, all the days that I haven't mentioned, all the bits in between, all the fishing sessions and things like that, those have been spent working down at my lake. And the main job I've been getting stuck into is building the swims. I'm starting to run out of light for today. But this swim is starting to take shape. This is Pipe Point. And um, I've got two of the sides boarded out. I need to do the steps leading down to the peg. Obviously, I've got to finish boarding off the, the other side here. And uh, I need to board the front off as well. And backfill with a bit more. A bit more gravel and we'll be done. So it's New Year's Eve and I've just popped down the pole for a couple of hours this morning to try and get some more work done on the Pipe Point Swim before we all head off out this afternoon. 
if I can get those sides boarded, boarded up, I'll be happy with that because that then just leaves the, the steps that I've got to build. I try and do a couple of hours down here every day at least. I do feel like I'm working to a bit of a, a bit of a deadline really. Although the pool doesn't open until March 2020, I want to try and get as much as I can done by March this year. Um, because in March I start my tutorials again, I'm on the bank every week. And that only really leaves weekends, which I do like to spend with the kids. Um, and, you know, last winter, February, we had the, the beast from the east. And uh, if something like that happens again, I'll be a bit knackered. So I want to try and get as much done uh, as soon as I can, really. Just in case uh, we do have some bad weather. And then that sets me back. So um, I've got all my tools ready. Let's get cracking. That afternoon, we took part in a bit of a New Year's Eve tradition in our household and headed over to Pickering to see the old station and visit our favourite fish and chip shop. From Pickering, we made the short drive over to Thornley Dale and the kids absolutely love it here. It's a really quaint, picturesque little village and at this time of year the whole village is decorated in festive Christmassy lights. Something else I haven't mentioned so far this month is the progress of my new pop-ups and I've had so many people message me asking when are they going to be released and also what, what flavour are they based around? Well, flavour wise it's based around a, a concept of mine uh, a combo of mine that I've been using for over 20 years um, but the guys at CC Moore have access to so many more flavours than I do and, and they put a few more in the mix and it really has raised it to a whole new level. It, it's completely transformed it and it's better than I could have ever hoped for. Um, so the flavours I am totally sold on. It's, it's quite unique. I don't think there's anything else out there that's quite like it. So where we're at now, there's a few little tweaks I want making to the colour. Um, I want a washed out pink to be a proper washed out pink. And there's one other little slight tweak I want making to the bait spray. And then after that, they should be ready to hit the shelves. So that was December and it certainly proved to be a very eventful month. There wasn't much by way of carp fishing from me, but I still managed to catch plenty of other species and had some great socials along the way. I also got to spend some quality time with the family around the festive period. But we have now moved into 2019 and next month it will be a very special edition of Carp Life because it will be Carp Life's first birthday. So thank you for the whoop there, Alex. So hopefully you can join us next month for this very special celebratory edition of Cartlight.